This is NDTV and you are watching NDTV Prime. We drive the new color and new variant of the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza. We have the Ferrari Portofino review from the Middle East. And on our US freewheeling segment, things get autonomous. It is a brand new episode and yes, that's the car you've been waiting for for months. It is the AMT or AGS version of the Vitara Brezza and I have that review coming up. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. This is CNB and here is the automatic Brezza. The Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza AGS or AMT has arrived, finally, and we've driven it first and exclusive. A long pending variant for this best-selling compact SUV, this was always something the market and people like me had been demanding. Maruti has been selling around 12,000 units of the Brezza every month and so it didn't really need any help with trying to keep volumes up. In fact, it really was manufacturing capacity constraints that have held back variants of certain popular models. So, Maruti has taken its tried and tested Magneti Marelli sourced automated manual transmission actuator system or AGS as Maruti calls it for the familiar 5-speed manual gearbox and brought it to the Vitara Brezza range. The same system has been seen on the Swift, Desire, though I have to say it feels better on the Brezza. Now that AMTs are here to stay, there's really no point in talking about, oh, you know, an AMT is a little bit different, not as sophisticated as a CVT or a torque converter automatic gearbox. All that is passe because, like I said, they're here to stay. And so lots and lots of models already have them and lots more will get them too. This one was always expected. And I have to tell you, it really, really adds a lot to the Vitara Brezza portfolio. Now, would a petrol add to it as well? For sure. But the whole advantage of the AMT is, uh, you know, most people will be using their Vitara Brezzas in city traffic, isn't it? For the most part. And that's where the whole convenience factor really, really shines through because it makes it so hassle-free. And you know what? The AMT gearbox is pretty smooth. AMT cars start from a standstill usually with a lurch forward. And boy, have we seen that on Maruti's AGS systems before. Not anymore. Unlike the Desire's AGS, the Vitara Brezza's AMT is a lot smoother. It also gets a creep function like in the Tata Nexon AMT, which helps achieve a smoother takeoff. And I am quite impressed to find that, that there's a total recalibration on that system based on throttle input. Now the nice thing about the gearbox is that it's holding its gear. So even at lower RPMs, the gear won't shift down unless of course you slam down the accelerator because you want to do a quick overtaking maneuver let's say then yes there is that bit of a kick down feel and it's really nice to see how quickly the gear changes down and how smoothly as well i like that very different from some of the earlier gearboxes we got especially from maruti and uh, even at the higher end of that rpm cycle you find that even in drive mode when you're trying to really push the uh, engine hard it kind of holds that gear that's nice it holds it all the way to about 4500 rpm so you really get that surge because Obviously, when you're trying to push it down like that, that is what you're looking for. The AMT is therefore a welcome addition to the Vitara Brezza lineup. How it compares to the Tata Nexon Hyperdrive is best left to a proper shootout that we'll no doubt bring you soon. But I will say this, where the Nexon has more power and a slightly smoother gearbox, the Brezza has commanding SUV-like ride height and sportier handling also nicer ride quality. 
so it shall be a rather pitched battle i would reckon and it has not escaped me that both cars donned orange to step out in their automatic avatars now the vitara brezza was always a good looking car it maintains those proportions and continues to look just as good except you get a new color and it has the contrast white roof silver roof rail white mirrors and black wheels that's what's new in this uh, let's say new variant that's been launched now and it's an option that's available of course on the rest of the range for the color they're calling it autumn orange it's been launched in the thick of summer and it's very much like the orange that you got on the baleno at the start when that car first launched so i think it looks good on the uh, vitara it makes it look a little european very contemporary and kind of makes the car look a little larger though to go with those black wheels i feel it would have been really cool and a little hot to have a black roof as well you can get this color on any variant not just the amt and also without the contrast white roof that's available only on the top variants the new black wheels are also only offered on the top variant and speaking of black the interior has also been spruced up and given an all black treatment so the gray bits are gone and the dash now gets an interesting texture in its black finish Maruti has also made safety features standard on all variants of the Vitara Brezza. So Isofix restraints for child seats, a speed limiter warning alert that you can set, reverse parking sensors, seat belt pretensioners with force limiters, dual airbags and ABS with EBD. All standard. That's great news. And equipment has not really changed. You get the top end with the touch screen and Apple CarPlay and all of that. and maruti has played it very smart by making safety standard also smart is offering the amt on the top 3 trims and not just on one variant this means prices for this range from 8 lakh 54000 to 10 lakh 49000 rupees compare this with just the top trims on offer for the tata nexon amt and the mahindra tuv 300 amt with prices staying well over 10 lakh rupees and maruti's move looks even more attractive now all we have to wait for is news of the petrol model of the vitara brezza for now the amt will no doubt boost sales of an already popular superstar and now let's move on and talk about the latest ferrari it's the portofino which replaces the california though in many ways brings similar attributes to that car only trying to make everything better Is that really true? Well, Cyrus Darber went down to Dubai and had a chance to drive the car. Here's our review. The word Ferrari conjures up a very special imagery for anyone who knows even a little bit about cars. And while their history on the race track has been outstanding, It is their road cars that really keep them going. And while everyone gushes over their mid-engine supercars or their front-engine V12s, it is the entry-level drop-top that actually rakes in the big chunk of change. And now here is a new one, the brand new Ferrari Portofino. I know as automotive journalists we aren't supposed to swoon over a particular car or a particular design but just step back put everything aside and look at this the portofino in my opinion and I do not say this lightly this is today the prettiest car in series production in the world I know the F type looks nice and the vanquish looks really really sexy but in this color in this spec Well I might change the wheels cuz I think these are a little boring but in this color in this spec the Portofino just looks absolutely perfect. Again, the prettiest series production car in the world. Now Ferrari have been doing a lot of detailed work on their cars in the last couple of years. The 812 has a lot of them, the 458 and the 488 has them. And uh, this again sort of continues that trend. So you get these nice vents around the headlamps which uh, allow air flow to go through. 
and come through the uh, front uh, wheel arch and they come out, the, the air comes out of yours. You have like this low pressure area on the wheel arch which of course increases downforce. But again, this car is all about looking pretty on that boulevard and not going as fast as you want around Monza or around the Nürburgring for that matter. And it does this so well. Look at these rear haunches. Reminds me of the 250 GTO. And even this little chink in the back reminds me of all those lovely classic Ferraris of the 60s. And of course, it's been a little dirty, as you can see. We've been going around the outskirts of Dubai in the Portofino, having a lot of fun. And that's exactly what I intend to continue to do so through this day. So, well, let's get in that, fire it up, listen to that lovely exhaust and have a better day. But first, before everything else, even though the idea of the roof down has a romanticized notion attached to it, I think I'll put it up. Because even with my love for drop tops, I think the Dubai heat and more importantly the dust is way too much to handle. And I really don't want to get this lovely interior all dusty either. Oh and in the Portofino, you can put the roof up on the move, although only till about 20 km per hour and it takes just 14 seconds. Talking about the interior, the first thing that strikes you is that clean and uncluttered look. Round jet-like AC vents, a simple horizontally oriented touchscreen in the center and typically Ferrari gear selector buttons and of course, a ton of carbon fiber. You do get the typically Ferrari steering wheel with the start button, headlamps, wipers, indicators and of course the Manettino. That is the switch you can use to change driving modes from comfort to sport and do that absolutely bonkers ESC off which turns off all the electronic aids to the driver. And although the steering wheel controls might appear to be very confusing, spend about an hour and a half behind the wheel and it all becomes second nature. All in all though, especially as compared to its predecessor, the Portofino is a much nicer place to be. Especially if you spec it to the max with the right color, the right materials, the right seats and some added unnecessary yet cool features like the passenger display. So now that we've waxed lyrical about that beautiful exterior and we've showcased that lovely carbon fiber festooned interior, let's talk about facts and figures when it comes to performance because at the end of the day this is a Ferrari and uh, although this isn't the fastest one that they make, it is still quick enough to blow your pants off. So let me quickly rattle out the specs. It's a 3.8 litre V8 twin turbo engine mounted up front like every GT should be. It makes 592 horsepower and 760 newton meters of torque which is by any stretch of imagination a lot of power. Now this thing isn't as quick as say a 488 so it does 0 to 100 in a very slow and pedestrian 3.5 seconds and that by no means is actually slow. It is actually really nice and fast when you want it to be but when you put this Manettino in comfort mode and settle down and you want to drive peacefully like I am now, especially considering the fact that it's 44 degrees outside. I'm in seventh gear doing 100 kilometers per hour well within the speed limit in Dubai. It's a really, really comfortable car and that is exactly what the Portofino is meant to do. This is Jekyll and Hyde all wrapped up in a beautiful red body. It is two-faced. It is a comfortable car when you need it to be. It does make you look oh so good on that lovely main street boulevard in your city and at the same time if you do want to shift down a few gears and go for it it still does that too especially when you turn it into sport mode and really let all those 592 horses rip out from those quad exhaust pipe setups at the back the portofino is the kind of supercar that you can really drive daily Mostly that is because it is very comfortable and rides really really well and also because it isn't very low and doesn't scrape at every pothole, bump and speed breaker you encounter. 
It is also because Ferrari have made sure you only get as much power and torque that you actually need. This means that you don't get all those 760 newton meters of torque to begin with, as if you did, all you would end up doing is shredding your rear tires. It is quick, yes, but it is also very usable. In fact, it is as usable as your average compact SUV, albeit with a much nicer sounding exhaust and with a lot of drama once that roof goes down. As an entry level Ferrari though, the Portofino is very very hard to criticize. When it comes to India later this year, with a price tag of about 3 crore rupees, we are sure that there are gonna be a fair few takers. The Portofino looks good, drives well, makes all the right noises, has all the drama of a cabriolet and even makes a very bald and fat automotive journalist look good. What more could you possibly want? You might wonder what I'm doing out in the freezing cold in a little bit of a drizzle right in the middle of an American motorway. Well, it isn't an interstate highway. It does look like one, doesn't it? It does have the boards and you have an exit there, an off-ramp. You've got roads that look like an interstate, but it isn't. We're actually at an automated driving testing facility just outside Detroit in Michigan. And this place called the American Center of Mobility aims to transform automated cars are tested. Autonomous cars need a real-world test facility that can replicate how cars drive and that's exactly what this place aims to achieve. In fact, some of the sections of this facility have actually been a part of the American interstate system not too long ago. Apart from highways, you have off-ramps that join into other main roads, signal lights, intersections, stop signs and even simulated U-turns, essentially infrastructure that can replicate all types of real-world driving conditions. And to make it even more realistic, the American Center of Mobility even has a tunnel to simulate situations where cars could lose connectivity due to poor satellite or network coverage. Now, this facility is in a very nascent stage of development. They've just started maybe a month or two ago and they are going to get into a bigger sort of stage of development very soon. Now, you are going to see more tech here. You are going to see uh, future tech like inductive charging being tested too even if it's on a stop uh, or sort of predefined area or when the car's actually moving on the highway. Inductive charging is essentially similar to your phone's wireless charging. In this case though, cars will actually be able to charge via induction charging plates embedded into the road, thereby almost never running out of charge. This will greatly help in electric car adoption as it negates the biggest problem with electric cars range anxiety. And we're building uh, the American Center for Mobility in multiple phases. As our product developers, our users need different environments, test environments, the key is they have to look like the real world. So when I said it's not your grandfather's test track, it's not a traditional high-speed durability oval. It actually, because those don't really exist in the real, real world. It looks more like a real United States highway because it actually was a United States highway. The Detroit-based American Center for Mobility though will not only be testing autonomous cars. Since it's based right next to an airport, the center will also be testing flying cars or personal mobility and transport solutions that entail sustained flight. Personally, while we think that flying cars for personal use are still a ways away, Similar solutions for delivery services like Amazon, for example, could be just around the corner.
चलो दैट्स इट इट्स अनदर रैप ऑन अनदर एपिसोड मोर स्पेसिफिकली एपिसोड नंबर सेवन फोर्टी फोर इफ यूर इंटरेस्टेड ऑफ सी एन बी आई होप यू एंजॉय इट प्लीज रिएक्ट टू इट प्लीज बाई योर सीट बेल्ट एंड प्लीज जॉइन मी नेक्स्ट वीक